Beneath alien-like structures, we found ourselves waking up in heavy rain besides one of the most scenic, derelict locations we have ever come across. In today's abandoned video, we explore an incredible abandoned thermal power station that sits in the mountains during a thunderstorm. Join us for the entire expedition as we explore the untouched Goliath to find out what remains after 20 years without use. Alistair, what? have you heard that 85% of people are not subscribed? Are you joking? They need to hit the subscribe button and press the notification bell to never miss a video. The first episode is now available. Subscribe to us on Patreon in the description to watch the whole series. Night is beginning. We are crossing borders on another lengthy drive during our 2023 European trip to reach a stunning place that we have a small window to capture. After this infiltration, we will start to head back up north towards England. We can't document it now, however, so the task in mind is to find a suitable camping spot until the morning. But on first approach, things aren't looking too positive. In the darkness, we creep around the power plant's former cooling towers, searching for an ideal spot. Okay. What have you got? We've just sorts of all our options. Um, there's quite a few treed areas, but there's not much space. All of these tower things are quite stripped. Um, a few of them are flooded apart from the end one perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, so there's like concrete beams that we can hammock between, quite easy to get in. And there's a nice parking space just over there with stairs leading right up to it. Brian. So we can uh, lug all of our equipment up. And that sounds perfect. And sell for a cosy night. We've got. Um Alex in the woods, I believe. Charlie in the car, and then us three here in one of the abandoned boilers. Everyone's kind of decided what they want to do tonight. Based on the vibes they've been getting from this place. Very creepy one with the working power, but no one seems to be here. And there's two cars on site. <laughs> and Theo's made his hammock a bit too tight, so. <laughs> oh, perfect.
As we slowly awake in our various positions, Daybreak is revealing what can only be described as the most picturesque location for an abandoned industrial complex that we have seen. With a 1.2 km access road leading up to the power station, it overlooks the valley 800 metres up the hillside with reason to limit pollution, designed and constructed in the mid-1960s. Its towering chimney and four cooling towers, one of which we had camped in last night, are famous in the region, as well as the array of houses that were built for workers, all of which are defunct. This is not good though. I'm actually not getting wet there right now. Oh my god. <laughs> we, are, we are on a hill. <laughs> get, get to fear, get to fear, get to Yeah. We awoke at literally the perfect time to see it coming. We're in this tiny, tiny bit of slide shelter that we're getting a little wet. Oh, he's going for his rope. <laughs> Come back in. When the rain had passed and the rays of sun shined over the unbelievable landscape before us, we thankfully had the peace to get dry and prepare for our exploration. The thermal factory was built in order to compensate for the winter electricity shortages in the area after a large consultation. Taking advantage of its proximity to a nearby refinery, there is a long oil pipeline that was later transporting water from the local canal. At the strange looking structures that were the site's cooling towers, of which were our homes for the night, this water would circulate around on its arrival, allowing the steam from the turbine circuit to be condensed before being cooled at the towers. Not wanting to wait any longer, we closed in on the premises and soon found an entrance. After being shuttered for more than 20 years, we were very curious to visualise the state of the interior, especially with minimal security. Finally made it inside this stunning power station. Looks very decayed on here. Is that asbestos? Yeah, it probably is. There's a lot of it externally as well. Yeah. Supposedly this one's been shut since the 90s, or at least um, decommissioned. Just motors, motors here. here. Yeah. These look like they would have been the compressors perhaps. Almost turbine-esque. Down here, just below the actual main turbine hall. It's interesting exploring a different type of power plant because this is a gas plant and our experience is mainly with coal so I'm sure there's many similarities between the both. Still just gonna have to try and 
figure bits out as we go. Looks a little bit more active than the rest of the bits in the boiler house. Obviously this would have been like cargo. Massive loading doors there. Huge space. Very typical of power stations. The gantry could come all the way over here and pick things up off the back of trailers, I assume. Anything else that comes in here if it needed to. Arrays of pipes above us. That huge space up there is definitely the turbine hall. Gonna decay. Often you see an admin section running straight through the centre of the boiler house. Old notice board. It's ironic that there's a wet floor sign when you look at it now. The switchboard. Very rusty. This is a cool view. So much flooding in here. Clearly been disused for a long time. No idea what any of this is, with it being gas and it all signed with a foreign language. But this stuff looks quite cool. Spectro photo colour emitter. Oh, this looks like really old. Yeah, this was definitely a lab. Judging by these desks, I can see a rusty Bunsen burner in the corner. Oh, yeah, this is just the same as the other side. It's slightly different to the coal ones we've done. Yeah, we've done a gas power station. Hmm. Just a different fuel used, really. Yeah. I think we've seen the majority of the stuff down here. This plant's quite small, which is nice because you know, vertically it's huge. I, sh I assume this turbine hole is going to have the same wow factor as the others do, but it's uh, it's all very compact. You can see everything quite easily. It's the location that makes this one for sure. Yeah, as you will have seen, it is in a stunning spot. This is interesting. Yeah, we never usually go down to this level. No, it's normally all the way out the bottom. And there's not many walkways that you can get kind of at this midpoint. Normally, stuff's just all down there. Look at those turbines. Bright red. I can't wait to get up there and have a proper look. With the sun casting an orange glow into the turbine hall, we figured it was about time to leave the lower level darkness and descend. Let's not withhold any longer. Let's get up into some open air space. I'm not even fully taking it in yet. I'm gonna look this way. Yeah, we'll do a full loop around. Look at that, mountain views. These are spare parts, aren't they? Mm, big turbine houses, basically. And then oh. here we go. This is really clean. Look at that. 
It's as if they stripped away the yeah, little bits and just left the turbines. These bits here, that we just walked past the houses, these would have been over yeah. these bits, so they would have been quite boxy, really. Yeah. Um, but I quite like this. Yeah, like this is cool. You can see those curling pipes coming out of the tops of them. I, I just like this because it's so different to what yeah, we have yeah, at yeah. home. Proper yeah. European looking on this. Yeah. Really nice. Somehow, despite decades of disuse, the plant's turbines remained in excellent condition and it felt like just the right type of modern for an abandoned power station. The two red generators had a rotation speed of 3,000 spins per minute, allowing a production capacity exceeding 700 kilowatts. Notice that the way they've been stripped is opposite to each other. This one's lost its front case, and the one behind me's lost its back case. I wonder why they did it like that. Surely it'd be more efficient to do both at the same time. Does mean we can see underneath all of the shells, though. A huge turbine, some of the biggest I've ever seen. And I don't think I've come across red ones ever. So that's always cool. Can get a closer look at these blades here. I wonder how long they've been sat here because they're very rusty. It looks like there's multiple sets as you can see there. I like how these parts have been left although they look a bit scattered does allow you to have a proper look at how things have changed over time. You can see inside one of the housing units here, the bits in it are definitely just other bits being stored, but it looks really long when you're looking down there. I zoom out as well. See if I can see if it's the construction of this plant or it's a different one. I would presume it is of this plant. Why else would it be here? But it's common that some of the stations hold archive photographs um, from nearby stations. You know, some that may be designed by the same architect or share an interest architecturally. I've never done a power station in such a scenic place. This is jaw-dropping the views of the mountains. And to the left is a humongous lake. I can poke you out this little hole. Clouds are coming over the mountains and we're almost higher than them up here. There was one distinct room we became very excited to witness on the turbine hall floor that had been very tempting. I love this glass window leading up to the control room. Yeah, it's been catching my eye. I mean, it's not a very inconspicuous control room <laughs> no. walking around the centre. I've been waiting to go in here with you. Oh, it's decaying better than I've ever seen any control room yeah. before but it's still just so like intact. It's, yeah, literally. You've even got that clock up there. I know, missing none of the, uh, none of the time stamps. None of the floor tiles are just bubbling up. Yeah, it's pretty the much the, like the perfect condition for a control room in my opinion. Literally. We have to travel far to see ones like this nowadays.
It was a special control room, totally untouched with levels of decay that we rarely see in the UK. Every gauge and button remained intact, bulging slightly with the weight of water against them. This was the brain of the plant, and even though it was a thermal station, the spaceship-like architecture was still the same. ceiling would have all lit up. I've just realised. Let's look at the panel. We've got the telephone there to show its age. And even this monitor and keyboard just look very outdated. Look at it rusting away as well, the metallic panel. Is behind the control panel. Got a med box on the left. It's almost flooded in here as well. Truly never seen that. Is there anything down here? Or in here? into this admin bit again. Ah, it's a switch room. It's a huge room. Blimey, this one's even bigger. Seen anything like this in the coal ones? Endless corridors. Entering the admin section, and by the looks of it, I don't think we're going to be entering it for very long. Looks way more modern than everything else. Yeah, just empty rooms. This would have been reception. Very similar to many admin bits that I've seen in um, disused power stations. This is quite cool though. Would have been the uh, intercom that would have rung out over the whole site. The old blueprints there for the site. 1967 dating. Throughout the 1990s, operations caused significant monetary losses and the owners eventually decommissioned the property. Several rehabilitation projects have been attempted since, but unfortunately nothing has come from them and the only visitors now are photographers, scrappers and vandals.
The boiler house looks a lot better up here than it did down below. a big hopper. Oh, the boiler house isn't the best, so last thing for us to do is head up to the roof, which isn't an easy feat. Unlike coal-fired power stations, the two boilers were very cramped and uninteresting, so we were fairly close to leaving. However, there was still one more strenuous task that we desired beforehand. It's different to most of the coal ones we've done. Finding access to the roof is usually just a straight staircase all the way up. This is weird. This has to be something that is gas-related. I've never seen. Almost a chasm like this in a coal-fired power station. That goes all the way down as well. Fucking hell. Upon the roof, the alpine breeze colliding with us, the perspective was spectacular and we wonder whether we will ever reach a power station summit to have a similar view again. Exploring the incredible sight had been one mammoth job and we were all shattered after a short night's sleep and the long staircase to the roof. Nevertheless, we knew that this would be a morning we would think of fondly for years to come. As this video draws to a close, we would like to include that we have just hit 100,000 subscribers, so we would like to say a massive thank you for all your support. We have some videos coming soon to celebrate, but normal episodes will continue in the meantime. Thank you once more. Everybody say hooray! hooray. Yippee! <laughs> Yippee. Here are some of our photographs captured at the abandoned power station. If you like the look of them, check out our Instagram page in the description, where we share images from our explorers months before they are seen on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Additionally, thank you a final time for helping us reach 100,000 subscribers. We have a big announcement in our next video too. See you next time.